Greetings. Welcome to Black Hat USA 2010. You are in the exploitation track, and I present to you Chris Valasek. <laughs> Um, hi, everyone. Can everyone hear me? All right. Uh, as he said, my name is Chris Valasek, and this is cross-site scripting for dummies. Um, no, we're going to talk about the low fragmentation heap today. And uh, a lot of things have, uh, have kind of changed since uh, Windows XP Service Pack 2. And uh, we're going to go over all that stuff today. Um, a lot of data structures have been added right, um, to uh, deal with this newfound technology that it needed to add data structure. Um, in my opinion, memory management has become uh, probably far more complex than it used to be. You used to have these simple look aside lists, right, that were just singly linked lists. Um, low fragmentation heap I is kind of a bit more complex. Um, obviously, there's new security measures. And when I say this, um, this is the Windows Vista code base that has you know, rolled into uh, Windows 7 as well. And with all these security measures, you need to ensure uh, that you can get the proper levels of determinism in the heap uh, when exploiting vulnerabilities. Uh, you know, before writing a bunch of uh, uh, four-byte uh, uh, addresses everywhere and getting a, a, a nice uh, unlink, uh, that, that's over. That doesn't exist anymore. But um, even with all this protection, there is, um, there is still uh, there's still a lot to be done with, with metadata corruption. And, uh, and we'll discuss that as well today. Um, it's going to go in order um, from boring to boringer to most boring to fun. Um, we'll talk about the core data structures, um, all the stuff they added uh, in, in this, in this uh, new heap. Um, we'll then talk uh, about architecture, uh, specifically the free list, and they have changed drastically since uh, we've last uh, visited them in uh, the Windows XP code base. And uh, finally, um, everyone can feel free to go asleep while I go through the core algorithms, uh, as I'll do it both for the front end and, uh, and the back end. And uh, lastly, we'll discuss tactics, uh, specifically heap determinism, and then some um, exploitation techniques, uh, one by Ben Hawks, uh, which I call Ben Hawks number one, and then uh, another one that is strikingly similar uh, by me, uh, which is overriding this free entry offset. Before I start, I would like to kind of define some terms. I'm not trying to say any other terms are wrong and mine are right. I just want to be consistent throughout this talk, and they're also consistent uh, throughout the paper I wrote uh, with this presentation as well. Um, I got all the code from a specific version of NTDLL. Uh, I know that's changed. Uh, I had a panic attack when I saw it changed. Um, luckily, not too much, uh, if anything, was touched uh, that I cover in this presentation. Um, when I say block or blocks, one block equals eight bytes. Uh, you know, that's the uh, unit measurement for keeping track of memory in the heap. Uh, a chunk is a contiguous piece of memory that is either measured in blocks or bytes. Um, of course, I'll say LFH instead of saying low fragmentation heap every time because that's just a mouthful. And um, finally, this is probably uh, the one that some people might not agree with, but um, when I use the term bucket or heap bucket, this actually refers to uh, uh, the size, uh, a unit measurement, instead of actually a piece of committed memory that will service requests. Uh, I do this because uh, there's uh, a heap bucket data structure in the debugging symbols, and it's a four byte data structure that is solely used for indices and size. Uh, when I talk about the committed memory that's used to service these requests, I'll say heap bin, user blocks, uh, or something of that nature. OK. Um, time for the core data structures. If you don't understand all these right off the bat, um, that's OK. Uh, they're they're kind of complex, and I think you'll get a better idea of how they work once we go through the algorithm section. Um, we'll start with the kind of heart of all this. Every heap that gets created is going to have a, a, a heap base. And this heap base is this big data structure, and it, it's really similar to how it was in um, Windows XP. but some things have changed. There are security mechanisms. Uh, the first thing I'll talk about is a thing called the encode flag mask. Um, this is a value that's set in the heap create call, and it's used to check to see if a chunk was encoded. It'll do a bitwise operation and determine if a chunk was encoded or not. Um, that brings us to the encoding member. This encoding member is a pseudo randomly generated value during heap create that actually used in the encoding process when encoding chunk headers, which we'll talk about as, as we go on. 
Um, the blocks index or the heap list lookup structure um, is the next slide and I think is the second most important data structure uh, in the Windows 7 heap. Um, that brings us to the free lists, and these are similar to the free lists that were in Windows XP, but instead of having these dedicated free lists, you have this overall free list structure, and we'll go over that more in the architecture section. Just remember that this pointer resides in the heap base. And finally, um, you have a front-end heap, and the only front-end heap supported by Windows 7 is the low fragmentation heap. There is no more look-aside list. The heap list lookup, or blocks index, um, it is a, a, a linked list data structure, so uh, the first member is a pointer to the next uh, blocks index. If there isn't one, it's going to be null. Um, it has an array size. It tracks uh, chunks of a, a certain size, and this array size is measured in blocks and says this is how many uh, uh, in, in blocks uh, chunks I'll, I'll, um, I, I will track. So uh, the first blocks index, as I call it, will tr track all chunks below uh, 80 blocks or 124 bytes. Uh, the second one will track uh, uh, chunks under 800 blocks or 16K. Um, you have a base index. Since there's multiple blocks index and they measure different sizes, this is just used to get a relative offset to places. Then you have a list head. And this list head is literally identical to the heap free list pointer. It's assigned uh, during creation in heap create or RTLP extend list lookup. Um, so it is literally identical to the pointer that is in the heap base. Um, now that you have multiple blocks uh, index, and, and, and these blocks index contain list hints, right? These list hints are, are kind of like the old free list, um, as they're dedicated at a certain size, but they actually can go into the next size as well. Uh, we'll go over this in the architecture section. And be it that each one of these blocks index can have free lists, right? You're going to need uh, the optimization, the list in use ulong aka the free list in use bitmap. Instead of having one just in heap base, you're going to have one for each blocks index. Um, the low fragmentation heap block zone structure is a small data structure that's used solely for providing addresses to create other data structures, and we'll, we'll kind of get on this more in the allocation section. The low fragmentation heap, as you can probably guess, uh, keeps track of items in the low fragmentation heap. And uh, I think the most important data structures are the buckets. These are the four byte data structure, the heap buckets that I talked about. You see that there's only 128 of them, right? But the low fragmentation heap can keep track of 16K. That means there's you know, less buckets than there are chunks. Um, there's actually an algorithm that is uh, used to determine if a, a chunk can be serviced by the low fragmentation heap. This low fragmentation heap contains uh, a heap local data. And this heap local data, sole purpose is providing uh, uh, an array of heap local segment info structures. Uh, again, there was 128 of them. Uh, that, the, the kind of same algorithm is used to determine if there is one for uh, a certain size. These local segment info uh, structures contain things called sub heap subsegments. And uh, I know this is kind of really boring and tricky, but hopefully I have a diagram at the end that, that will that'll sum all this up. But, um, Th these heap subsegments uh, are actually used for servicing requests. They contain pointers to committed memory that is used for allocation and then freeing into them as well. Um, each subsegment will contain, um, I think, two most uh, integral pointers. Uh, the user blocks, uh, which is a pointer to a heap user data header, and uh, that user data header is, uh, precedes a big block of memory that we're going to call the user blocks. That's the committed memory we use to allocate and free memory. Uh, it also has an interlock sequence structure, and uh, this structure here, uh, sole purpose is keeping track of the state of that user block. It keeps track of a depth, that is, how many chunks does this thing have left? Um, it also keeps track of an offset. Uh, the offset is, where is the next free chunk of memory I can use? And as you see, this is the, the heap user data header. It's a, a, a simple 16-byte uh, structure and then the big block uh, of memory that we're going to use. The interlock sequence, as I said, keeps tracks of depths and offset. Lastly, we're going to cover the heap entry structure, which is what a lot of people refer to as the chunk header, right? Um, 
It has changed drastically since Windows XP, but it still contains a lot of the same information. You have your size, uh, you have flags, whether it's free or whether it's busy, uh, and you're going to have a checksum in the third uh, uh, offset. Um, just uh, uh, you know, to let you know, only the first four bytes of this eight-byte data structure are encoded, and we'll talk about that more as we uh, get along in this presentation. Okay. So here's my overview, and uh, I, I redid this a few times, and my buddy John Larimer helped me pan it out so it wasn't a big jumbled mess. But uh, this basically has uh, the heap, it contains a heap list look up, right? And it contains a low fragmentation heap. That low fragmentation heap contains a heap local data, which contains an array of heap local segment info structures, which contains heap subsegments. And those subsegments, they hold pointers to committed memory, right? And, and it holds uh, you know, uh, a structure that's going to keep track of how much of that memory is left and where should I get the next piece. So I, I think this diagram kind of works out well how, how everything works. Um, on to the architecture section. Back long, uh, a long, long time ago, right, there were free lists and they were dedicated. Uh, that is, a dedicated free list would only hold chunks of a certain size, uh, no greater or no less. Um, if they were empty, they would actually have the forward link and back link pointer pointing back to the Sentinel node, to themselves. And that would denote that they're, they're an empty list. These all resided on the heap base. That's, that's no longer the case anymore. The, these dedicated free lists have, have been shed for these list hints, or we'll still call them free lists, they're just not dedicated. Um, uh, they don't terminate by pointing back to themselves, they just point to the next biggest chunk. Uh, the last uh, biggest chunk on the list is going to point to that heap free list pointer on, on heap base. Now, they're the same in it, that they're a linked list structure, but the, the, the backlink of these free lists kind of solves a, a, a dual purpose now. Um, in the Sentinel nodes, in that blocks index, the list hint structure that I was talking about, um, these do contain lists for a certain size. But in the backlink, um, if a low fragmentation heap isn't in use for it, it's going to keep a counter. And that counter is going to be used to actually enable the low fragmentation heap after it's reached a th certain threshold. Um, if it doesn't contain a counter, it's going to contain a heap bucket. And uh, it's uh, the address of a heap bucket plus one. That's how the allocator uh, and deallocator know uh, whether to use the front end heap, the low fragmentation heap, or, or the back end. Uh, and like I said before, the low fragmentation heap only deals with chunks from 8 to 16K in bytes. Um, that doesn't mean the blocks index don't uh, track uh, you know, chunks larger than that. It's just that the low fragmentation heap won't, won't uh, do any of the work for them. Okay, so here's a little simple example I have. Um, it's only a, a small heap that has the first blocks index enabled, and it has five chunks that it's tracking. Uh, the first three chunks, uh, going from uh, upper right-hand corner to bottom, are, are, are for uh, six blocks. Um, but as you see, the, the third one for six blocks doesn't point back to uh, the blocks index structure. It actually points down to the next biggest chunk, which is of size uh, seven blocks. Um, this differs greatly, obviously, from how it worked in Windows XP. Um, that, that chunk for size of seven blocks, uh, again, doesn't terminate itself. It points to the next biggest chunk. Um, this next biggest chunk is held in a special free list. This is very similar to how free list zero worked in Windows XP. You're going to have a list hint that holds all chunks greater than array size minus one at a certain position. This finally, since it's the last chunk that we're managing, points back to uh, the, the, uh, the heat base in, in the free list uh, member section. But you also see that there's a free list uh, uh, at free list eight that doesn't have a forward link pointer everywhere, but it does have a backlink um, that, that, that um, can be uh, bitwise added with one. And if, it, if that passes true, then it contains a heat bucket, and this one does. Um, you see all the other ones that do have forward link pointers actually contain uh, you know, an integer value. This is the counter that's used in, um, uh, to enable the low fragmentation heap. I like to um, think of these new free list structure as a circular organization of chunk headers, or a cock. And um, these cocks are much like the highway system, um, right? So you're going to you know, wrap around. Um, the example I like to give is you don't go to mile zero at US1 to get on it. You're going to find the nearest tributary to get on it yourself, right? So that's what the list hints are like. Now, if the list hints fails and you know, you're in Cuba, you probably have to start at mile one and, and, and go from there. So uh, hopefully with this explanation and example and my newly devised acronym, you will remember how the free lists work. 
Okay, we're going to start with allocation. I like to start with allocation because you can't free a chunk without allocating it first. Uh, the allocation uh, uh, function uh, kind of starts off with a little bit of a wrapper, um, as does free. Uh, the first thing this wrapper is going to do is it's going to assure that the size you pass to it is 8 byte align. It's going to round it to the nearest 8-byte uh, integer, right? Um, this also, uh, if you pass it 0, it's still going to give you 8 bytes back. Uh, uh,